Hello, uh, I would just like to take the opportunity now to talk a little bit about my thoughts uh, and insights when it comes to yeah, competitions and how the educational system is uh, built a little bit and uh, things that are good for maybe more young musicians to know who happens to apply for some competitions and stuff like that, maybe for the first time, because it's not always like that the best musician wins. And also the sentence best musician is also very vague. I mean, it's not really what is really the best musician, right? Um, so I would like to talk a little bit about this. And if, uh, yeah, if there are more experienced people also watching this uh, video, of course, many of you guys, you know this already. This is nothing new, but I think information like this deserves to be available online for people who maybe doesn't know. That is why I'm waking, making this video here right now. So one thing to know, if you happen to apply for uh, yeah, one of the more maybe big competitions for the very first time, something that is good to know is that, yeah, it's not always a fair play, meaning uh, even if you theoretically maybe was the best one, uh, doesn't mean that you win. Because you have to keep in mind uh, that there are people listening to you who is in the jury, who are in the jury. Very often that is people who also have participants in the competition, which means, of course, the teacher of someone who plays this in this competition want their student to win. So they will then sometimes also try, you know, to, yeah, to make that person win. Uh, because that will then good look on their own resume as well. Like, oh, I'm a good teacher because I managed to uh, have this student win this competition. And it's also, of course, good for that student who won. And then also other people think, oh, wow, this teacher must be really good. Okay, maybe I want to apply to that class and blah, blah, blah. You know, there's a lot of this kind of politics and stuff like that but behind the competitions and how they work so it's not always as objective and honest as maybe more uh, new people in the game would imagine uh, so that's maybe good to know and um, I, I also know this now from having been on the other side uh, of the committee table uh, meaning I have been in some juries as well and it's quite interesting to see uh, and hear how people talk uh, when we are talking about feedback and talking about yeah, uh, deciding a result. Because even if the jury is pretty impressive and you have many professionals there, doesn't actually mean that they know very well what to listen for. Uh, I mean, sometimes, like I said, yeah, you can have a teacher who just wants to get their own student to win. That is one scenario. Another scenario is that you have some yeah, professional musicians who just happen to be there because they are professional musicians on the paper but they have never been in this kind of situation before and they actually have no clue on what to listen for. So, and then when you actually ask, uh, yeah, what, what do you think? Then uh, they say, okay, yeah, I like this person, for example, the best, and then this one. And then you ask, okay, based on what? And it often stops quite quick. It's often like, yeah, I just like them more, or, you know, they, they look good on the stage or they, they sound nice. And yeah, okay, fine, uh, but, that's quite thin. Uh, there are very many elements that, in my opinion, a jury should listen for. Uh, and many times, yeah, the, the jury, they, they don't always know how to listen, believe it or not. Maybe this sounds uh, arrogant or something like this for me saying right now, considering I'm often among the younger people in the jury. But uh, then I would rather like to talk to people my age who happen to be more or less in the same situation as me, who sometimes are in the juries. Please, uh, let's try to improve the situation here. So personally, what I do, I want to try to be as objective as possible uh, while listening to other people, which means I have also made some crit criteria, like a list that I'm going through with each participant um, with top 10 things that I check off uh, when I listen to uh, people in competitions. And uh, this is uh, something I already wrote down and something you can just download for free uh, in the description below as a PDF. And it's, in my opinion, maybe a more objective way to judge. Uh, so what it says here is like 10 points. It's not necessarily in uh, the most important order, but things you need to check. Yeah, sound is number one. Yeah? The roundness of it, like the darkness, uh, the flexibility, and does the person actually know how to adapt the sound? So there are many topics within sound itself. So sound is one thing. Another thing, rhythm, stability, rhythmical stability or rubato, when they happen to have a cadenza or something, how's that, how's that working out? Number three, intonation. 
is the intonation well judged from an instrumental point of view, meaning they know how to play the instrument in tune. But let's say there is another one as well. If the piano is out of tune, if the piano is sharp, do they hear that? Do they adjust anything? The piano cannot adjust. So then you need to adjust to make this performance in tune. So intonation, important. Number four, technique, basically fingers. Uh, five, projection. Does the sound project anything? Or how is the balance here? Um, and when, for example, they play loud uh, and they do project well, how is the sound quality then? Uh, another thing is musicality, of course. That's number six. Do, is there some kind of signature uh, with this performer? Do they, is it clear that they have some story behind or they're trying to formulate something? Is it a rhetorical performance or are we just listening to the right notes being played at the right time? Um, another thing is style. Yeah? For example, if you play something from the Baroque era, uh, is this historically correct performance or is it not? Does the musical phrasing uh, show any knowledge about the era that the piece is written in? Uh, another thing, uh, number eight here is, for example, ch yeah, chamber music wise. It depends if you play with a chamber music group or if it's just a, with a piano. Normally on competitions, it's just a piano. Meaning, is there some chemistry? Like, is there some contact with the soloist and the accompanist? Or is it just like soloist and doesn't care anything? So how they communicate musically uh, is also very important. Especially also, yeah, because this is something you will use in orchestras as well. If you get a job in the orchestra in the future, very important to be able to communicate with your colleagues. Another thing is actually for my, uh, in my opinion, this is also important, posture of the participant. Uh, it, does it look ergonomically here? Uh, does this make sense? Or does it look like a very big effort and basically almost painful for the person who stands there? Um, th this is things to be judged as well. Uh, because this is very important to learn on a very early stage. Because if you don't, then this is something that can actually damage you later in life, physically. Another thing is the stage appearance. Uh, meaning, do you actually know how to take time on stage? Or are you very stressed and you just rush around? There is time for you. You can, you know, take the time that you need. Uh, does this person seem inviting on the stage? Imagine if you are a normal random audience member and you look on this, does it look inviting? Do you, do you like what you see? And does it look like the performer actually has fun up there? Or are they there because they are sort of forced to by some teachers or parents or do they, do they like this? Do they enjoy the moment? And uh, the last thing for me personally, not the most important one, but also important, do they play by heart? Or do they use the sheet music? like on the side, like a little bit like I'm doing now, or are they completely into the paper like this? Um, that is also things to, to keep in mind, especially maybe more on auditions, no, sorry, on competitions, considering that you are trying to be a soloist, so you should be quite free, right? So these are like some top 10 or top 11 points that I have on this paper. And then in the very end, I have just written other, meaning uh, I could add some notes if necessary, for example, about yeah, if the instrument is really bad, but the, everything else is great, but you just hear that the reason why this performer is not on the level as you would think is because the instrument has some bad things with it. Or for example, that the performer just lost control on the stage somehow, uh, things like that. And then in the end, what I do, I rate all of these things with numbers. Personally, normally from one to 10, um, but it depends a little bit of the number system that the competition you are in uh, has there, sometimes there are some requirements. For example, now I live in Poland, for example, and in Poland it's very often from zero to 25. So then I would rate 25 on everything here. And then in the very end, you do the math. So 25 plus 25 and blah, 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 blah. And then you have a final score. That final score uh, will then of course be different with all the participants. And then you can rate first prize, second prize, third prize and blah, 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 based on that score. Then you have judged very many things. You are being objective and you are not favoring someone. Uh, while at the same time, you have um, uh, yeah, a good answer. If people ask you, okay, why exactly did you uh, have this opinion about this performer? You have a very clear uh, reason and a good answer in return, which is very important. Also keeping in mind often participants in auditions, they want feedback after. And if you just sit there, and you say, yeah, I like this one and then this one and this one. 
And then let's say a person you didn't like, let's say person number seven on your list comes to you and asks for feedback. Maybe you don't even remember this person <laughs> if there are like 100 people in this competition. So write it down, have it clear. And uh, yeah, honest game, please. Very important in my opinion. Another thing uh, to keep in mind, sometimes um, actually what's being judged is not necessarily the artist, but the equipment, uh, meaning the instrument. Uh, not everyone can afford a brand new, really good bassoon by one of the best makers in the world. Uh, some people can, and they get a lot of stuff for free. Even if you know, maybe better than the person who has a brand new bassoon, even if you know better than them how to play on your bassoon, they get so much for free. It's a bit the same, imagine you're in a race with cars and you compete against 10 Ferraris and you show up with some kind of old crap car, no matter how good you can drive that car, most likely you will lose to the Ferrari. And then we're now suddenly talking a lot about financial situation in this as well, um, which is very pity. And many times uh, the, the people with more money who has a better instrument, yeah, they clearly win. It's very often like that. And then I'm really wondering, what are we judging here? Is it the instrument or is it actually the performer? Just to compare, for example, I've heard, uh, I've been very fortunate to hear some of the really best bassoonists in the world teach and sometimes they try out the instrument of the students, for example. And really, on, on, when you get to the level of the top of the cake people, they sound amazing, almost no matter what kind of instrument they're given. Uh, that shows quality from the performer knowledge about how to make instruments speak and work and resonate well that is impressive to just make a really good instrument play is less impressive another topic here uh, is uh, how the academies is sort of trying to educate bassoonists to become a soloist because very often in the academy you have to play tons of solo repertoire and I know, for example, in some really, really good high level academies, it's basically a new piece every week or two or three. And yeah, of course, great. You learn a lot of repertoire then. Uh, but reality is, even if you become really a bassoonist on the top of the cake, like, uh, you know, Tournament against Nazzolini level, even those guys, they don't financially survive from only, only being a soloist. Uh, this is, as a bassoonist, currently in 2022, not the reality that that's not possible maybe those guys are the closest you would get as a bassoonist today at least that i know of personally who maybe could uh, start to live from it but the reality is they're getting their incomes from teaching and before that it was orchestra solo gigs yeah they pay much better but they're most likely not going to finance your life as a bassoonist so then i'm also questioning uh how important that is to sort of educate soloists uh, for uh, as bassoonists. Sure, there are tons of really great bassoon repertoire um, uh, with bassoon as soloist. And of course, we should play this uh, much more, in my opinion, than we're doing currently, much, much more. But uh, I think it's important then to remember that uh, maybe try also to educate uh, people that has a chance to get a job within a field where you can actually finance uh, your life from this. Soloist for bassoon, that's not happening, <laughs> even if you are on the top of the cake. Um, so then I would rather try to focus more on, you know, climbing the ladder, get maybe an orchestra job first. Sure, if you get a solo gig, take it, fantastic, very happy for you. But keep this in mind. And this is something that comes from teachers, you know, they require that we play all of the solo repertoire. Uh, but uh, it would maybe be more interesting to educate someone that has a chance to get a job that will actually have some stability for the student's life later. Anyway, uh, back to the competition stuff. If you then happen to win many good first prizes, uh, uh, what happens then? Well, if you win some of the big competitions, normally what happens is that you also get quite good solo gigs with some professional orchestras, which is of course very prestigious and a lot of fun. Uh, pays normally much better than a normal orchestra gig. So nice, fun. So you have fun with that for, let's say, a year or two normally. And after that, in most cases, then you never really hear about this person again. Uh, it's just end of the line. Yeah, because then there are other competitions and new people will get the same opportunity. So 
this is not something you can, you know, face to finance your life on, unfortunately. So please keep that in mind. Um, but of course, the good thing with competitions to just finally say something good about it is, yeah, you will stay in very good shape and you will practice a lot towards it. Because of course, you know that the level there will be very good and everyone who is participating will do all they can uh, to win. So of course, very good way to stay in shape. Um, maybe that's, in my opinion, the best thing with it. So yeah, I just wanted to, to uh, briefly talk a little bit about this. Um, as I mentioned, maybe especially more for younger people who are uh, applying for competitions the very first time, please know uh, it's not always about how you played uh, that makes the, the result of this. Maybe theoretically you were the best one, but uh, that doesn't mean you, you win the game. Anyway, thank you so much for listening. Please feel free to check out the PDF down below regarding those requirements that, uh, uh, in my opinion, will be smart for jury members to, uh, to have a little checklist on. Uh, until next time, see you soon.